Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Black Panther Wakanda Forever's most shocking and mysterious scene turned out to be one hidden right under our noses from the very first trailer. A shot that, in retrospect, I probably should have scrutinized more, because water shouldn't burn like that in a country that runs everything on vibranium instead of fossil fuels. Spoiler warning before I continue, if you haven't seen Wakanda Forever yet and you're watching this video less than a week of its release, the spoiler blood is on your hands. So in Wakanda Forever, Shuri successfully synthesizes the heart-shaped herb from the fibers of a hemp bracelet given to her by Namor. She consumes the fluid to enter the ancestral plane where she sees <gasps> Killmonger in a cameo that surprises us and Shuri. Yet, something that Killmonger says Shuri chose. So how does this choice work exactly? And what are the rules of the ancestral plane when it comes to T'Challa, Shuri, and Killmonger and the other afterlives being explored in the MCU? Is that actually the g -g ghost of Killmonger there or a construct in Shuri's mind? And are many of these non-believers being plagued by the same sentient evil? Let's first take a moment to appreciate how well they hid Killmonger from us. The very first teaser in July 20 2022 included a shot of Letitia Wright in this ancestral plane throne room with zero evidence of Michael B. Jordan nearby. Really the cleanest VFX scrubbing that I've seen. They likely replaced him with empty red floor in that shot. That might be why the floor doesn't have that cracked clay texture that it normally does. But I promise there is a deeper significance to this and why we didn't overthink it when we first saw it. So Shuri takes the liquefied heart-shaped herb and immediately begins to flash to images of her mother, Ramonda's funeral, Ramonda's death, Ramonda protecting her when they were exiled in the 2018 film. But then Shuri wakes up underwater to the side of the throne room floor, the exact same spot where Ramona's life ended. Shuri's now wearing her white funeral garments, the ones she refused to burn earlier at the Riverside campfire, where she told her mother, if I sit here and think about my brother for too long, it won't be these clothes I burn, it will be the world and everyone in it. This is the exact moment that Shuri chose Killmonger to be her ancestral advisor. Killmonger's MO in the 2018 film was to use his vengeance to burn the world and everyone in it, or mostly everyone in it. The imagery of his torching of the heart-shaped herb garden visually parallels what Shuri sees now in this throne room. It's also what Rihanna's lyric refers to. Like Killmonger when he visited the ancestral plane, it was not the green belt that T'Challa described in Civil War and visited when he entered the realm. It was a mirror construct of a real world location with the glowing purple sky of the ancestral plane outside where they cannot reach it because they are exiles from that peaceful kingdom. Instead, what they get is the exact location where their parents died. For Shuri, it was a flood water beside the throne. For Killmonger, it was his father's Oakland apartment. And this inversion is underscored by the surreality of Shuri's clothes becoming magically dry when she rises from the water. And as she rounds the throne, she sees Killmonger and calls him by his Wakanda name in Jadaka. And she asks, how? And he responds, how is never important as why, right? You chose me. And Shuri says, impossible, I'd never choose you. Killmonger asks, why did you take the herb? And Shuri says, to see my family. But Killmonger says, nah, that's bullshit. You didn't believe the ancestral plane was real, did you? And Shuri admits, no. The opening words of this movie establish Shuri as a skeptic. She prayed, whispering to herself in the elevator, Boss, time is running out. Please allow me to heal my brother of this illness, and I will never question your existence again. But at that campfire, Ramona had told her about the invisible hand of T'Challa guiding his mother to this riverside location for the burning ritual. She says, I found your brother in the breeze, pushing me gently but firm, like his hand on my shoulder. And Shuri responds, he wasn't there, mother. The breeze instead he felt was just a construct of your mind. So back in the ancestral plane throne room, Shuri admits that she took the heart-shaped herb to just be strong. And Killmonger says, we're more alike than you think. I took it to avenge my ancestors too. Shuri counters, I'm nothing like you. You took it for yourself, then destroyed the rest. Unworthy king, afraid of being replaced, just a coward. And Killmonger says, no, I had the courage to do what was necessary to change Wakanda. How many people like your scientists did Wakanda protect before I took the throne? Cowards, those were the Panthers who came before me. Before for T'Challa. Shuri charges, don't mention my brother. You're the reason why he's dead. You burnt the herb, left us with no protector. Then Namor struck, killed my mother. Their blood is on your hands. And Killmonger says, nah, that ain't on me. And don't you dare take that away from your mother. She sacrificed her life to protect a girl from the lost tribe. Your father, he was a hypocrite. He would have killed that girl. Shit, he killed his own brother. T'Challa, he was too noble. He let the man who murdered your father live. And here you stand. Are you gonna be noble like your brother or take care of business like me? Shuri does not answer this question. She just wakes up from it like a nightmare. Not sure how she would have responded to that question. Now, before I continue, I want to thank this video sponsor, Inkbox. Because Black Panther, what kind of forever forces us to wonder, how long is forever really? Like, if I get a tattoo, is it going to last until the end of time? What if I want a tattoo now, but maybe not later? Well, that's where Inkbox comes in. Inkbox tattoos last one to two weeks, so you can express yourself with a tattoo for the mood that you are in right now. Without worrying about 
about whether or not you'll want it, well, forever. There are over 10,000 tattoo designs to choose from. You can even create your own totally unique tattoo easily using Inkbox's custom platform. And if you're a pro artist or an avid doodler, you can draw your own tattoo with one of Inkbox's freehand tattoo markers. So they come in these little packets here. And the one that I want to try is this adorable boo-boo ghost tattoo. Ghosts are rad. I just really like the design. And I'm gonna put it like right here on my wrist. I think that's a good spot for it. So they give you this primer wipe, you wipe the area. Wipe, 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 wipe. It is nice and dry and primed, as they say. Feeling it and placing it. Okay, it's now in my hand and I'm just gonna let this sit. We're gonna let some time pass and then check back in later after it's fully developed because it takes about 24 hours for a dark blue or black color depending on what your skin is. Okay, some time has passed and uh, check it out. I have ghostly, ghostly pale skin. So it's, you know, it's like a dark blue. See, unlike other temporary tattoos, Inkbox's ink sinks into the top layer of your skin. And then after a week or two, it fades as your skin naturally regenerates. The ink is plant-based, cruelty-free and water resistant. And here we are. I've been ghosted in the good way. Inkbox's tattoos are perfect for switching up your style, testing out your next tattoo idea and make for unique gifts for the upcoming holiday. Right now, you can use the code new rockstars to get 25 percent off your entire Inkbox order. And there's no minimum order requirement, but you can only use it once, so stock up. The code will only be good until the end of 2022. To get started with Inkbox, just click the link in the description to start browsing. So overall, the Wakanda Forever film takes Shuri from a skeptic to a believer, really this movie's answer to how we mourn. But the film does not force Shuri to adopt religious dogma wholesale. Shuri might be objectively correct, and the ancestral plane may still be a construct of one's mind. This being Shuri's own subconscious projecting the lessons that she needs to learn. Indeed, there is some irony to the trailer footage showing Shuri in this room by herself, because she is, in some respect, talking to herself. Killmonger, a figment of her own inner darkness and rage. Now, Moon Knight explored this concept of subjective afterlives in the MCU, spiritual realms that are formed by the inner beliefs of the visitor of that realm. Tawarat confirmed that the Wakandan ancestral plane is part of the same spiritual network as the Egyptian Duat. For Stephen Grant, that afterlife looked like a psychiatric hospital with the glowing purple Duat on the outside of it. For Shuri and for Killmonger, Monger, it's their parents' death sites with the glowing purple sky outside of those. Mark Spector made it all the way to the Aru, the Field of Reeds, which looks a lot like the ancestral plane when T'Challa nearly dies. These were the kingdoms that Shuri and Killmonger were denied. But in Shuri's final duel with Namor, as both of them come close to dying from their wounds of that fight, they both mentally return to their respective spiritual afterlife visions. For Shuri, she finally sees her mother Ramonda in that ancestral plane background, who says, show him who you are. So that leaves us with the fascinating question. Is it a mental construct and we have all the answers we need if we just listen to our inner angels? Or is the MCU saying that the invisible hand is real from a place beyond, outside of ourselves? The first assumption means that Shuri and Killmonger were blocked from the heavenly kingdom by their own selfish desires for vengeance. But the second assumes that, like Ramona being led to the river by T'Challa's invisible hand, that there was a second invisible hand that guided Shuri down a dark path. Was that hand that of Killmonger himself? I mean, think about it. The MCU is now in a place where love has both a physical form and a definition as that which perseveres to give us grief. So the dark hand that guided Shuri could also be a hand that guided Killmonger, a darkness that Ryan Coogler might plan to name in the upcoming Ironheart series. Now, if that is a step too far for you, I forgive you. But I do invite you self-empowered humanists to ask yourselves, do characters in the MCU truly have free will? Or are they really on destined paths laid out for them by Time Lords, robots, and other cosmic forces? Either way, I just love Black Panther Wakanda Forever as a story that gives us a way to more but leaves in our hands the choice over how much creed we assign to our grief. And I know you saw what I did there. This was my favorite scene of the film, and I wanna know your thoughts and interpretations on it. Comment down below with all your thoughts. You can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at EA Boss, and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching, bye. <laughs>